This video is going to discuss Rule 23, particularly the process of deposition taking. Before we go to the process, let me just recap the two modes of taking deposition. First is deposition on oral examination and the other one is deposition upon written interrogatories basis that is very clear according to Rule 23, Section 1. Deposition also can be classified into two, deposition de beni esse and dep deposition perpetuam rei memoriam. Again, paulit-ulit para hindi nyo makalimutan, deposition de beni esse is your Rule 23, that is deposition pending action. Deposition perpetuam rei memoriam is your Rule 24, meaning to say that there is no action yet or deposition before action or deposition pending appeal. Also, take note that the deposition may be conducted within the Philippines and in that case, iba ang pwedeng maging deposition officer or it can be taken outside of the Philippines, meaning in a foreign country and in that case, iba din ang deposition officers and also the requirements. So please take note. So let's go now to the process of deposition taking. Ano nga ba ang nangyayari during the deposition? First is that the deposition officer shall put the witness or the deponent on oath. Just like this, parehas lang sa court. Also, the deposition officer shall record the testimony of the witness. He shall personally record the testimony of the witness. And how is he going to do that? The testimony shall be taken stenographically unless the parties agree otherwise. This is the reason why yung deposition officer pwede siyang magdala or magbitbit ng stenographer as long as that stenographer is acting under the direction of the deposition officer and also in the presence of the deposition officer. Next, if there are objections, just like this, kailangan pag nag-object, may kasamang sigaw at kasamang turo, lalo na pag andyan yung kliyente, magpapasikat ka. So, if ever there are objections made at the time of the examination, objections as to what, objections as to the qualifications of the deposition officer, or to the manner of taking the deposition, or to the evidence presented, or to the conduct of any party or any other objection to the proceeding, then what is the deposition officer going to do? Of course, he will not uh, make a ruling to that objection. Ang gagawin lang niya is he will take note of the objection. So, this is your section 17 of your rule 23. We discussed this already. So, pag natapos na ang tanungan portion, tapos na, wala nang itatanong ang both parties, then the testimony will be fully transcribed. And when the testimony is fully transcribed, the deposition now shall be submitted to the, to the deponent or to the witness. For what reason? For his examination and that deposition should be read by the witness or the deponent. It can be read by him or to him. Unless, unless the examination and reading are waived by the witness and by the parties. How about in scenarios kung merong ipapabago si witness? Changes either in form or in substance. In that case, si deposition officer shall enter the changes together with a statement of the reasons given by the witness for making them. At pag natapos na to, ano ang next na mangyayari? Then the witness or the deponent shall sign the deposition. The deposition shall then be signed by the witness unless the parties by stipulation waive the signing or the witness is ill or cannot be found or refuses to sign. So in cases where ayaw permahan ni witness or ni deponent, Ano ang mangyayari? Then, in that case, si deposition officer ang piperma para sa kanya and the deposition officer shall state on the record the reason why the deponent will not sign the deposition. And in that case, kahit si deposition officer ang pumirma, the deposition may then be used as fully as though signed. So again ha, this is the procedure. Ipapabasa kay witness or kay deponent kanyang 
titingnan kung tama ba at pag okay na, pipermahan ngayon ni witness or ni deponent. What is our basis? This is your section 19 of your rule 23. So after mapirmahan ni witness ang deposition, what will happen next? Ang bola na ngayon is nasa kay deposition officer. The deposition officer shall now certify on the deposition that the witness was duly sworn to by him or by her and that the deposition is a true record of the testimony given by the witness. After this, he shall securely or the deposition officer shall securely seal the deposition in an envelope endorsed with the title of the action and mark the position of let's just say Juan de la Cruz so just like this and then he shall promptly file it with the court in which the action is pending or send it by registered mail to the clerk thereof for filing so this is the process of deposition taking so tapos na ngayon ang process ng deposition so when you talk about the process of deposition taking, we are actually talking about your section 17, your section 19, and your section 20. But let's relate our discussion to section 29 of rule 23. Ano ang sinasabi dyan? If, there are, if ever there are errors and irregularities in the manner in which the testimony is transcribed or the deposition is prepared, signed, certified, endorsed, or transmitted, or other otherwise dealt with by the deposition officer under sections 17, 19, and 20, then what will happen to that errors and irregularities? They are deemed waived. Importante yan ha? They are deemed waived. And what is your remedy? Your remedy is to file a motion to suppress the deposition or a motion to suppress some part of that deposition. And when are you going to file this motion to suppress? You are going to file that within reasonable promptness after the defect is asserted. Take note, ha? Huh? So, wag kalimutan motion to suppress the deposition. Very important yan possible bar exam question. So again, this is the process of deposition taking. But ano ang sinasabi ng court, ng Supreme Court during the deposition taking? In the case of uh, Desmarinas garments, Supreme Court said that the law does not authorize or contemplate any intervention by the court in the process of deposition taking and that is true whether the deposition taking is to be accomplished within the Philippines or outside of the Philippines. The court intervenes only in the process if a party, one of the parties meaning to the action, files a motion a motion under Article 15 of your Rule 23, under Article 16, again, of Rule 23, and under Article 18 of your Rule 23. So what is Article 15 all about? It is a motion to enlarge the time stated in the notice or a motion to shorten the time stated in the notice. Ano ba itong notice na pinag-uusapan natin? So itong notice na pinag-uusapan natin, take note that whether the mode of taking the deposition is through an oral examination or through written interrogatories, there must be a notice. If you read section 15 of your rule 23, very clear, a party desiring to take the deposition of any person upon oral examination has to give. So, mandatory, magbibigay siya dapat ng reasonable notice in writing to every other party to the action. And if you're going to read also section 25 of your rule 23, a party desiring to take the deposition of any person upon written interrogatories, meron din siyang mandate to give the other party with a notice. Ano ang dapat mailagay sa notice? 
the notice as far as for oral examination is concerned should state the time and the place for taking the deposition the name and address of each person to be examined this is your witness or your deponent if he or she is known and lastly if the name is not known a general description sufficient to identify him or her or the particular class or group to which he or she belongs for written interrogatories the notice must state the name and address of the person who is to answer them and also the name of your deposition officer the name the descriptive title and the address of the deposition officer or the officer before whom the deposition is to be taken question kailan ka magpapadala ng notice answer is before you conduct the deposition taking before deposition dapat magpadala ng notice so what will happen if there are errors and irregularities as far as the notice is concerned relate this to your section 29 errors and irregularities in the notice for taking a deposition are waived again they are waived and what do you need to do you have to file your objection but the requirement is it must be a written objection written objection must be promptly served upon the party giving the notice kaya yung notice very important yan ha so again when can the court intervene answer is before deposition so bago magkaroon ng deposition taking if any of the parties will file a motion to enlarge the time stated in the notice or to shorten the time stated in the notice then the court can rule on that again what is the requirement of the law there must be a motion filed and in that motion there must be a reason stated or cause shown what is our basis that is your section 15 and section 28 take note ha this motion is applicable whether the deposition is through an oral examination or through written interrogatories so another instance wherein the court can intervene is if the party files a motion under article 16 and what is your article 16 that is your protection order so ano ba itong mga protection orders madali lang first is either the deposition shall not be taken or matutuloy ang deposition but the party will impose conditions and ano itong mga conditions first is either the deposition may be taken only at some designated place other than that stated in the notice or deposition may be taken only on written interrogatories ito kung yung ang deposition is through an oral examination next certain matters shall not be inquired into or the scope of the examination shall be held with no one present except the parties to the action and their counsel next after being sealed the deposition shall be opened only by order of the court or if there are secret processes developments or research they need not be disclosed or parties shall simultaneously file specified documents or information enclosed in sealed envelopes to be opened as directed by the courts or other protection orders as long as it will protect the party or the witness from annoyance embarrassment or or oppression so this is your protection orders again dalawa lang to either the position shall not be taken or the position will be taken but with certain conditions and when when do you file this you have to file this before the taking of the deposition so again for your protection orders what is the requirement of the law you need to file a motion motion for the issuance of a protection order and when are you going to file this motion under section 16 you need to file this motion after notice is served so after notice is served you can file now a motion for the issuance of a protection order so you need to do this before the deposition taking and 
important in your motion, there must be a reason or a good cause shown. Section 16 talks about deposition through an oral examination. So can you also file a motion for the issuance of a protection order if the mode of taking the deposition is through a written interrogatories? Answer is yes. What is our basis? You read section 28. Nakasulat yan. Last instance wherein the court can intervene is under Article 18. What is Article 18? That is a motion filed to terminate or limit the examination. So to understand better, Section 18, let's differentiate it from your Section 16. When, when can you file a motion to terminate or limit examination? Answer is during the taking of the position. Basis that is very clear according to your Section 18. Very clear. At any time during the taking of the deposition, you can file this motion. But I have to make a qualification because this is only applicable if we are talking about deposition on uh, oral examination. Hindi ito applicable if the, if the mode of deposition is written interrogatories. I will show you later. And for your section 16, when can you file a motion for the issuance of a protection order? Answer is before the taking of the deposition basis. Section 16, after notice is served for taking a deposition, you can file a motion. Again, what is the requirement of the law under Section 16? There must be a motion filed and there must be a good reason or good cause shown. Who can file the motion? Any party or the person to be examined. How about in your Section 18? What is the requirement of the law? The uh, party can file either a motion or a petition. Take note, ha? a party or a deponent can file a motion or a petition. And what is the reason for the filing? The reason is the examination is conducted in bad faith or the examination is conducted in a manner that would unreasonably annoy, embarrass, or oppress the deponent or party. So magkaiba sila ng reason, ng ground, and here you can file a petition. Next, where can you file your Section 16? You can only file it with the court in which the action is pending. So kung meron kang case na pending in Quezon City, but your deponent or your witness is um, living in Baguio City, then you can only file this in your in Quezon City. How about your Section 18? Where can you file it? You can file your motion or petition either in Quezon City or in Baguio City, as long as it is in the RTC, the Regional Trial Court of the place where the deposition is being taken. So take note of your Section 16 and Section 18. So this is what I meant earlier. If the mode of taking the deposition is through an oral examination, then you can apply Section 15 and Section 16. But you have to file your motion before the deposition taking. Before. Take note, ha? Before. And then you can also avail of Section 18, that is your motion to terminate or limit examination, but you can file this during the deposition taking. During the deposition taking. How about if the mode of deposition taking is through, a, is through written interrogatories? Then you can also uh, apply Section 15, Section 18, and Section, uh, six, section 16 and Section 18. But you have to do this before the deposition taking. Before the deposition taking. So, magkaiba yung motion to terminate or limit examination. And if the mode is oral examination, you have to file it during the deposition taking. But for your written interrogatories, you need to file your Section 18 before the deposition taking. I will be discussing this in a separate video. Ito na yung procedure ng written interrogatories 
as well as the procedure for your oral examination. Thank you very much for watching.